Louisiana Beer Reviews Magnum Malt Liquor. Magnum Malt Liquor is 5.6% alcohol. Here's a can. This is the modern can design. It was introduced in 1981 by the Miller Brewing Company. In 1993, it won the silver medal in the malt liquor category at the Great American Beer Festival, and I believe that's the only award it's ever won. This is strange because um, on this can, which is from probably 2003 or 4, it says 6% alcohol. Now, this can might be older than that. Here is an older 1990s can. And before this, they had more of a gold oriented can. It says Magnum is remarkably smooth and rewarding with all the rich, full character you expect from a premium malt liquor. And you know how you expect rich character from a premium malt liquor. Uh, <sighs> I don't know, I can't figure this out because. They must have changed the recipe. This is saying 6% here. Here's a bottle from the current year, 2010-2011. There's no alcohol content listed. But on the website, it says 5.6% alcohol. And this is the strange thing. Magnum malt liquor has exactly the same specs as Mickey's Fine Malt Liquor. And you might not know this, but in 1999, Miller Brewing acquired Mickey's malt liquor from <coughs> excuse me, the Highland Brewing Company and Stroh's via Paps. That was one of the brands Paps had to turn over to Miller when they made their big deal. And I mean, they have identical specs. 5.6% alcohol, the same calorie count, same carbohydrate, same protein, everything across the board, which is making me think they must use the same recipe and just package them in two separate containers. They claim they don't do that. When I was on a brewery tour, the Miller representatives told me, no, we don't do that. Each beer has a separate recipe, but could two separate recipes have identical brewing specs? I don't think so, but I can't prove it. <coughs> It's strange also because Mickey's gets about a C average on Beer Advocate, whereas Magnum gets a D. And the bros give it an F. It gets Magnum also gets four ratings on Ray Beer and it gets a fine rating on the beer in me. In the past I've liked it. Haven't loved it, but I've liked it alright. I'm gonna try to keep an open mind today when I do this review. Uh, here's something I got from Miller Brewing in 1996. They used to send out these paper um, literature packages, and I don't think they send this out anymore. They they just tell people look it up on the internet. But here it is. It says malt liquor, and, it, and this thing goes through and describes all the uh, beers they made, and they send out fact sheets on each beer. And there it is describing malt liquor. It says, most larger American breweries include a malt liquor in their menu of products. Malt liquors are beers with a distinctive taste profile and slightly higher alcohol content. Malt liquor shipments represent a relatively small segment of the beer industry. Magnum Malt Liquor. Miller's malt liquor brand is Magnum, which was introduced in 1981. The brand won a silver medal in the American malt liquor category at the 1993 Great American Beer Festival. Now that's about, in my opinion, that's about the least hyped description of a beer I've ever seen from a beer company. I mean, it is giving it to you straight across, you know, just straight facts. Uh, here's the Magnum fact sheet. Still very uh, simple. It talks about the advertising supported by point of sale materials, which it always has been only supported by point of sale. Things you see in the liquor stores and the beer store signs and posters and all that. They've never advertised it on television, radio, magazines. But it has a pretty loyal following and it's a steady seller. I, I see it in a lot of places. Um, you see it in all different kind of packaging, 
12 ounce cans, 16 ounce cans, 24 ounce cans, and different bottle sizes. Typically 40 ounce, also 32 ounce and 22 ounce. Well, go ahead and get started with this. Cracked open pretty easily. Not too much, um, you know, of a, a carbonation release. A little bit of skunkiness, which you do get from a clear bottle. I recommend if you drink any beer, you don't drink it out of the clear bottle or the green bottle. Drink it out of a brown bottle or the can, and you avoid that skunky problem, which is caused by light penetrating the glass and spoiling the beer. Okay, pour it into this fairly cold mug, had it in the freezer, but it's not so cold anymore. It's best to drink malt liquor ice cold actually. All right. Well, as one normally sees with American malt liquor, or as they call it in the United Kingdom, extra strong beer, you get that thick white head and you get a clear, I would call this yellow color, maybe a golden color. Lots of active carbonation, lots of bubbles streaming up. Uh, malt liquors tend to be a little more golden than the American regular lagers, which are more of a straw color. I say tend to be. They're not all like that, but they do have that tendency. Uh, all right. I'm going to go ahead and give it the smell test. <sighs> okay, some, some skunkiness, but it's not too bad. I mean, I've opened up some of these clear beers before, and it was just awful. So luckily, this one wasn't out in the light too long. The aroma is sweet. Of course, you get that beer character. I mean, frankly, it's not that different than what you would find as far as the smell of any regular American style lager, really. I don't think it's that different. I, I think if you did a blind smell test with this and a lot of other beers like Budweiser, Coors, Miller, Paps, Schlitz, you wouldn't be able to really tell the difference. All right, now the most important thing, the taste test. Well, it has a certainly has a Miller taste, that corn, barley malt, mild hop bitterness, very mild. It's very smooth, not bitter at all. It's not too sweet. It's balanced. Excuse me. The mouthfeel is light to medium. <clears throat> it's not as light as a regular American beer. It's more full body. And that's what sort of what I like about malt liquor is you get a little more of a bold taste, a full body taste, except that with Magnum, the taste is not real bold. Uh, it's not as bold as, say, uh, Hurricane, certainly not as strong as Hurricane High Gravity. That's, in a, that's at another level. Another level. But... Uh, for someone who might want a little bit more alcohol punch, but also want a beer that's easy drinking, smooth, inoffensive, this could certainly uh, fit the bill. It finishes crisp, fairly, you know, pretty refreshing. It's dry which is another characteristic of American style lager. It's very dry. It's really not that different from, say, Ice House, although really it's almost a little milder than Ice House or uh, Miller High Life. It doesn't really have that 
strong of that of a vegetable cooked vegetable smell that you get from the middle of high life and the middle of genuine drab. But overall, this is a very easy drinking beer. It seems like every time I drink Magnum, I like it a little bit more. Um, would I bring a six pack of this 12 ounce long necks to a party? I might, a dinner party I might, but then I would never find a six pack of 12 ounce long necks of Magnum. You might find a six pack of cans, 12 ounce cans, I've seen that before, but that would be something that you would probably bring to uh, a get together with some buddies watching a, a ball game or maybe a picnic. Um, I, I don't know how people would look at this at a dinner party, but I mean, if you were going to eat Mexican food, this would certainly cut the, the uh, spice. Same thing with spicy boiled seafood. I think the funny thing is that the same person that might drink Miller Genuine Draft and talk about the quality would, would look down on Magnum. And they're both probably made with the, almost the same quality ingredients. Uh, I think Magnum is probably made with pretty good ingredients, pretty, a pretty fairly high quality of, uh, level of ingredients. It's just marketed at a lower level. Um, guess you would say it's marketed at the economy level. Uh, you can usually find a 40 ounce of these. I think I got this 40 ounce for about a dollar 89 in Reserve, Louisiana. I've seen it some places about two dollars and something. Uh, in Baton Rouge, on a uh, Highway 30, Louisiana Highway 30 in Baton Rouge, last year I saw it on sale. They had Magnum 40 ounce bottles for a dollar 29, and there weren't any available when I went in there. They were all sold out. Or maybe they had one or two bottles left, and then when, that's what it was. And I went back to get get one, and the lady said they're gone. So. Uh, it's relatively inexpensive, so if you if you're if you're value minded and you like something that has a good taste and it's priced right, this could be something you could go for. Plus, it's got that higher level of alcohol. So overall, laissez le bon temps roule. This is a good beer. I'm gonna go out on a limb. I'm gonna give this a B. I don't know where these people are getting this D minus F from. And then they'll turn around and give Mickey's a B or a C. I mean, it's so similar. Um, I think it's a good beer. I don't know. I don't know what the offensiveness is with this. I don't get that. I think it's a good beer. I've always liked Magnum since I started drinking it in '96. It's just that I've liked it more and more as I've drank it, and I'm gonna continue to get it off and on. So I'm gonna say, good job, Miller Brewing Company. South African breweries actually. Keep making Magnum and I'll keep buying it and I'll keep drinking it and I'll keep enjoying it. All right. And I'm going to end this review by saying, y'all come on down to New Orleans. The parades have started. We had the crew of Carrollton and King Arthur today. And then they're going to have more starting Wednesday and all through the week through March 8th. Y'all got to come on down and go to the parades. And enjoy Carnival. We got some more good reviews coming up.